Thanks to Imprint for sponsoring this video. It can be a little unsettling when animals don't look like they're supposed to. Imagine walking through a forest at night and not knowing if the thing you see moving is a plant, an animal, or something else. You could be surrounded, and you'd never even know it. These masters of disguise aren't likely to harm you, though. They've mostly evolved to be basically invisible. Unless you're on the lookout for suspicious leaves and twigs. And they're so thorough that even their eggs look like seeds. But why would a bug evolve to mimic a plant, anyway? The Bizarre Beast Pin Club is open for subscriptions for the whole month. Sign up by December 20th, and the first pin you will get will be one of these incredible bugs. Insects in the order Phasmatodia are known as phasmids, and they're found throughout the world, on every continent except Antarctica, though their preference is for tropical areas. But you don't necessarily have to go on a hike to find them. Phasmids are both easy to take care of and really cool to show off, which makes them popular among amateur entomologists, zoos, and museums. So when I found out the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium has phasmids of both the leaf and stick mimicking varieties in their collection, I had to come by and check them out. There are over 3,000 species of phasmids of both the stick and leaf variety, and they are mostly nocturnal, and they are herbivorous. So if you're out in a tropical forest, you might see what looks like a leaf eating another leaf. This might lead you to wonder if you're one of the phasmids that is known as a leaf insect, and so you eat leaves and your family also looks like leaves, could you accidentally mistake your family for food? Well, in the case of the Malaysian giant leaf insect, the answer is yes. People have observed some of these guys chomping on their fellow leaf-shaped insects because they looked a bit too much like a snack. At the California Academy of Sciences, for example, they stopped this from happening by housing only a few of their Malaysian giant leaf insects in the same environment at once, and by making sure they have a good supply of actual leaves to eat. But who can blame leaf insects for a little bit of accidental cannibalism when the work they've done to imitate leaves is just so good? True leaf insects make up only around 1-2% to of all the phasmid species, but they are very cool to look at. This is Philium philippinicum, and the bright green color and leaf shape obviously make it very leaf-like, but it's the details that really make it stand out, or blend in, I guess. Some of them have little brownish edges, just like an older leaf. It's really incredible. And leaf and stick insects have had a long time to perfect this mimicry. The first fossil of a leaf insect was discovered in Germany and published in 2006, and it was around 47 million years old. More recently, several different fossil stick insects were reported from China among deposits dating back around 165 million years. And one of the studies of some of these new species compared their anatomy to that of other stick bugs from 99 million years ago. The research researchers found that the oldest stick bugs were relatively chunky compared to today's twig-like species, so stick insects may have become more slender over time. Based on what we currently know, scientists think leaf insects evolved their appearance to blend in with the leaves they were surrounded by and feeding on. Like, there are leaves that are shaped like that 47 million year old leaf insect from Germany found in the same deposits. Ultimately, they probably developed this resemblance to avoid visual predators like birds, bats, lizards, and even early primates. And to really sell the bit, leaf insects don't just make themselves look like leaves, they try to act like them too. Which is kind of a weird task. How exactly does one act like a leaf? Well, stillness is a good start. Leaf insects will spend a good amount of time simply not moving. But sometimes there's a breeze, and when that happens, leaf insects will shake to match the movement of leaves caught up in the wind. And stick insects rely on similar behaviors as well. In the case of the Vietnamese stick insect, that means having a long, thin, greenish body that can get up to 15 centimeters long before you take the legs into account. And much like the leaf variety, these guys are normally staying pretty still, or moving in a sort of shaky manner like a stick caught up in the weather. So phasmids have evolved a number of ways to blend into the vegetation and avoid predators. But 
it's not always enough. Some species have evolved additional non-vegetal methods to protect themselves or to get a very literal leg up during mating. Take the southern two-striped walking stick, for example. It's also known as the spitting devil, which is both a fantastic name and a fitting tribute to one of its additional defensive tools. This bug has two glands on its thorax that can spray out a smelly, irritating spray up to 0.6 meters or two feet away. Meanwhile, there are stick insects that do not have the spindly legs like other stick insects we've seen so far. These are known by the fantastic name tree lobster, and the males have an incredible spine on their leg. Only the males have these big, thick legs, which suggests that this is more about competing for mates than it is defending from predators. When researchers watched thorny devils in action, they found that the insects would gather in tree holes during the day, venturing out after dark. This set up the perfect mating opportunity for male thorny devils, who use their thick, spiny hind legs to battle it out with their competition. So yes, sometimes phasmids have to to turn to other adaptations, but they are still cosplayers of the canopy, meaning they are deeply committed to the foliage bit. And as we mentioned earlier, they are so committed that if you take a look at their eggs, you might notice that they look a lot like seeds, which seems like an odd choice. Looking like a stick seems like a great way to avoid predation, because who wants to eat a stick? But seeds? Plenty of animals like to eat seeds. That led scientists to wonder if maybe getting eaten is the point. After all, some plants rely on animals to eat seeds so they can later disperse them via their waste. Maybe a similar principle applies to phasmid eggs? So in 2015, a team of scientists fed eggs from three stick insect species to brown-eared bulbuls, and then sifted through the bird's waste to see how many of the eggs survived. The least durable egg species ended up with a small but respectable 5% survival rate, while the best was around 8.9%. These eggs were intact and didn't seem to have any damage, showing they could survive the digestive tract. Unfortunately, in the two years that followed, the eggs never hatched. The scientists repeated their experiment in 2017, but this time they focused on eggs from only one of the stick insect species from their first try. They started with 70 eggs, 14 of which survived being fed to a bird, and two of which hatched in 2018. So the numbers aren't great. But having their eggs resemble a tasty meal could be something that helps stick insects expand and where they live. But there's also another advantage to having eggs that look like seeds. It helps phasmids trick ants. Some seeds have fat-filled structures at one end that help attract ants so that they'll gather up the seed and bury it in their nest. Meanwhile, at the end of phasmid eggs, there's a similar looking structure called a capitula that also gets ants to take note of the eggs and bring them back to their nest to be buried. And that, it turns out, might be the phasmid's goal all along. But what makes getting into an ant's nest such a good thing? Well, they're a great shelter from parasitic wasps and other predators. In some species, like the Australian walking stick, the nymphs that hatch from those eggs bear an uncanny resemblance to the ants that brought them in. It's only after emerging from the ant nest and molting that these stick insects will shift into their more plant-like forms and look like this. Which means this species goes from looking like a seed, to looking like an ant, to looking like a plant. Imitation isn't just about what you're imitating, it's also about how you go about it. Phasmids aren't content to just look like leaves and sticks. They've also found ways to act like them. And it's this subversion of our expectations about what bugs are supposed to look like that make these such great Bizarre Beasts. Joining the pin club at BizarreBeastShow.com helps us keep making these videos. If you want a phasmid to be your first pin, subscribe by December 20th. And if you like this shirt I'm wearing, you can also get that right now at BizarreBeastShow.com. And now for some bonus facts. So earlier I mentioned the spiny legs that male thorny devils use to compete for mates, but not all phasmids have such obvious reproductive adaptations. Some species just skip out on mates altogether. For these species, if a female phasmid can't find a mate, it's not a problem. She can simply lay unfertilized eggs that will hatch into clones of herself in a process called parthenogenesis. Which means, if you think about it, phasmids aren't just out there copying leaves and sticks. These parthenogenetic species are also copying their mothers. This is especially true in some phasmid collections at museums, which are 
essentially colonies made up of female clones. So when a male of that particular species does pop up, it's big news. In 2021, the Museum of Life and Science in North Carolina reported that in the decade or so that they had been keeping colonies of the parthenogenetic Malaysian giant leaf insect, they had only witnessed the hatching of two males. In 2022, one of the researchers here at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium noticed that one of their Vietnamese stick insects was weirdly thin compared to the rest of the all-female colony, and it turns out that's because it was male. This is not that. This is one of the females. We did not get the famous male. But how does this happen? Well, unlike the sex chromosomes of people, of which there are two, X and Y, phasmids have their sex determined by the number of X chromosomes they have. Females have two X chromosomes, while males only have one. These males that manage to pop up in the middle of a female colony are likely the result of some random occurrence during the reproductive process, where their developing self just lost one of those X chromosomes. Thank you for watching this very special, on location mostly, Bizarre Beast episode. We wanted to super thank the folks over at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium for letting us come to their facilities and look at all of their phasmids and these butterflies and hold things and talk to us about all the different insects they have. If you're ever in Missoula, stop on by. This is a wonderful place. Thanks to Imprint for sponsoring this video. Imprint is a brand new way for people to learn built from the ground up. Unless you've used the app, you likely have not seen something like this. Imprint is beautifully illustrated and animated, creating a highly visual, effective, and interactive learning experience built for bite-sized learning. Imprint offers a seven-day free trial, and if you go to imprintapp.com slash bizarre, you can get 20% off an annual membership. Their expansive content library includes courses, book summaries, and quick read lessons. One of their quick reads that caught our attention is when will AI be smarter than us? AI is a subject that seems to come up constantly these days, but if you had to explain it to a friend, could you do that? Could you point out what is and isn't AI? So invest in a life of learning and check out Imprint today. Go to imprintapp.com slash bizarre to start your journey today. And don't forget, as a fan of Bizarre Beasts, you will get 20% off your membership and a free seven-day trial.